We've got just a couple minutes left until the closing bell. So let's take a check of the market, see what's happening there. We've got a mixed picture, but the Dow pushing higher. We're seeing the Dow up over 300 points, the S&P 500 up five points, and the NASDAQ down about 74 points. Now, I want to introduce our two guests who are going to help us digest what's happening in the markets. We've got Simona Makuda. She's State Street Global Advisors, Senior Economist, and Ross Mayfield, who's Investment Strategy Analyst at Baird. But we're sprinting towards the close, so I want to bring in Jared Blickery. Jared? All right, well, let's take a look at the charts here. And this is going to be the week in price action. So the Dow is closing up in a few minutes, about 4%. Uh, the NASDAQ, by the way, kind of going the wrong way here, but still up for the week. That's up 3%. S&P 500 up just barely today, about 2.5%. And finally, the Russell 2000, uh, the real outperformer of the week, that's up over 7% over the trailing five days. And I'll tell you what, VIX is coming down too. Let's take a look at the SIBO S&P 500 volatility index. That's trending in the opposite direction, usually happens when we have stocks going up. And you can see almost touching 20, that is a key level that we haven't been able to breach for more than a minute uh, for about one year now. So we'll have to see what happens with that next week. Also taking a look at the 10-year T-note yield, up 11 basis points now to the highest that we've seen in 13 months. All right, now let's check out some of the stock action this is a NASDAQ 100, but I'm going to switch to a week-long view. And guess what? we still got some green here. Despite the fact that 10-year uh, interest rates or 10-year yield is screaming higher, we're still seeing some gains here for a lot of the mega caps. Uh, Tesla coming back for 16% after its nasty series of losses in the prior weeks. That's up 6% over the trailing seven days. So nice job to see that there. Uh, not too many losers, not too, many, too much red on the screen, but we are going to take a look at the sector action here. Discretionary is a big leader. That's up 6%, uh, followed by real estate, and utilities, materials. And finally, at the bottom is energy, but everything in the green for the week. All right, got a closing bell. Finish the week. The NASDAQ snapping its uh, losing streak. In fact, we'll let you know that when we settle, NASDAQ year to date is going to be up about uh, almost. 3%. The S&P 500 going to be up about 4.7% year to date. The Dow is going to be up about 7% once things settle down year to date. Some of the sectors that did well today, as Jared was just telling you, we saw uh, industrials up about 1.3%. Um, energy, which has been on a tear. Energy was just barely in the green of the sector today. Oil, WTI, was uh, settled down below $66 a barrel. And then, of course, you've got the uh, yield on the 10-year now up over 1.6%. Let's go back to our guest to talk about where all of this is headed. And, and Simona, let me get bring this to you. What do you think is going to happen as we go forward with the reopening? Uh, if interest rates are going up, what's going to happen to those independent businesses? Because they're going to have to start raising prices, right? Well, um, I think we'll see how much. But I'll tell you, we had... Um, a 70 degree weather day yesterday here in Boston. Everybody is ready for spring. Everybody's ready to go out. And I think spring is coming, not just weather wise, but for our economy as a whole, as we are going to reopen more and more uh, now that we have vaccines um, really scaling up. Um, activity is going to really go on a tear in the second quarter. And I think at the very least you look at this and say, you have a favorable backdrop for pricing power. That doesn't necessarily mean that price increases are coming, uh, but you have to watch this with a careful eye. Ross, how is the backup in bond yields the big market story today? It's been the big market story for a couple of weeks to a couple of months now. Um, you know, it, for for all the things that it brings in, it's it's higher higher growth expectations, higher inflation expectations baked in, um, higher discount rates on some of the the high flying tech stocks. So um, I, we expect it to to continue to be uh, the main story in market. Um, certainly, the 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 move to one six has been dramatic, but it's probably still not commensurate with the the, the GDP outlook or the growth outlook for the year. So. Um, you know, if pressed, I would I would guess that those rates are going to continue going higher throughout the year. 
But the speed is probably the important thing, at least for volatility in the equity markets. Ross, we have an FOMC meeting next week. You think that the bond vigilantes will force the Fed to blink? Uh, you know, they might try, but uh, I'm pretty willing to take the Fed at face value. They've gotten very good at not blinking if that's the uh, if that's the bar that we're going to use. No, I expect them to hold the hold the party line pretty well. Um, you know, we'll see if, if the, the bond vigilantes put pressure on them. They, they you know, put a little bit of language in some of their uh, some of their public appearances over the last few weeks. But it's really been been pretty steady from what they're saying. So we'll see. But I wouldn't expect it. Simona, is the strength of the U.S. economy's recovery, especially with this one point nine trillion dollar stimulus, is it being underestimated? Um, I I don't think so, because you see the consensus numbers have really gone up quite a lot uh, over the last month and especially, uh, you know, more recently. Um, I think what we remains to be seen is actually how much of this stimulus can materialize and be dispersed into the economy this year versus how much may actually be a little bit delay and in fact speak positively, positively for 2022 growth. I think everybody expects a very good you know, few quarters ahead of us. There is so much pent up demand. Consumers by and large, of course, there are differences, but by and large are in an excellent financial shape and everybody's willing and waiting to go out and, you know, enjoy ourselves again, visit those restaurants. I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Ross, but I got to ask this question of you. So what about the interest rates going up? They, they're not yet at where they were in December 2019. And if the fundamentals of the, the market are, are driving stock values up, not because of interest rates are concerned there, but because earnings are going to grow, why would investors be concerned about the 10-year approaching where it had been before the pandemic? Well, I think it depends on the kind of investor you are. Um, you know, certainly the the high flying growth stocks who uh, are, are, you know, a lot of their 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 current value is based uh, on on value to be earned way in the future have gotten tagged a little bit as rates have moved higher. But if you're an investor in economically sensitive stocks or sectors, um, you're doing pretty good. The broad market is incredibly strong. The breadth is really good. Uh, the S&P was just at a, a you know an all time high. So you know I don't think there's a ton of concern to go around. It, it, it does feel like. Um, you know, we're grasping at straws for for concerns here. Um, but at some point, the tenure, you know, if it moved too fast or too high, you know, could be a problem. But at one six, I'm not concerned. And I think it's more just the the volatility that's that's a result of the rotation playing out. So, um, you know, concern a little bit, sure, if you're a certain type of investor. But overall, um, not too much, especially since it's probably emblematic of higher growth expectations. And Ross, just following up on that, uh, you're not worried. Do you think central banks uh, shouldn't really be worried as we see yields moving higher? I don't think they are worried yet. I mean, it, certainly if the if the tenure continued to rise quickly, they might have to address um, what that could do to the, the financial tightness. But they're focused on the labor markets. They're, they're not worried about, um, you know, transitory inflation, as they've called it for this year. So they're watching the labor markets and, and their metrics of unemployment are still around the, uh, the double digit levels. So they're going to be watching for a vaccination led reopening and getting service sector employees back to work. And that seems to be their focus. I don't think they've, uh, you know, they, they haven't expressed concern yet. Um, and they, they didn't over the last couple of weeks as um, bond yields caused some volatility in equity markets. So, um, you know, I can't I can't read their minds, but it's, I, I don't see it yet. Uh, Ross, I agree. The vaccination-led reopening. That's what we all really care about. And that's the stage we're at right now. Simona Makuda and Ross Mayfield, thanks so much.